Thank you. Welcome back to Mushiku Tensai, Jobless Reincarnation, Anime Review, Episode 41. Yes, who would have thought, though, that of all the anime I've watched and reviewed for that based on my light novel, this is the one that has had the most reviews. I think this is more even than Overlord or even Re Zero. Here's the thing the episode count has not reached 50 yet. No, it has not. Uh, the most recent episode just aired, which is called, I think it's called Into the Labyrinth, I think it is. Come on. Thank you. Into the Labyrinth, episode 44. I don't think we're going to get episode 50 this season. If there's going to be season 3, which I really hope there will be a season 3, that'll probably be the episode. Yes. So this episode adapts from the first four chapters of book 12. Yes, for some reason... The studio decided not to adapt the final chapter of book number 11. So, the adaptation of the book remains unfinished. Because they had to basically rush through six chapters in one episode last time. And this is also the case, similar to what happened with the previous season show, where they adapted a lot of chapters in one episode and... It just seems like that two of the episodes in the previous season should have got a director's cut, and it was the episode that book five. For this season, however, it was it from what I can tell so far, it's only gonna be the last of the previous episode that needs a director's cut. Because they adapted six freaking chapters. They need like forty five minutes to adapt, not twenty three. Yeah, the episode should be forty five. I still think it should be. Uh, I'm hoping, eventually, that the studio does release the records of the episode. Maybe. So, in this episode, <clears throat> there is some stuff expunged here, but... Uh, some stuff that was expunged was fine. Some of the other stuff was a bit surprising, the fact they cut this. So, let's get started here. So, we start out with Rudius and Elsie when they arrive in the town. Now... The first thing that's cut here is the fact they're mentioning about going to the Avengers Guild, which is immediately cut because as soon as they, the basic was shown here is not the sort of, of the book; it's actually a little bit into the chapter, where like there's also talk going to a lodging. So they just proceed to arrive in town. It seems like you watch the episode. Oh, they arrive in town, look for Gus and Paul, and they just have the fun geese. The dialogue the guy says is straight from the book, so I'm glad I kept it in. Of course, he's called Macau because he want to go down a lab because he want to know where they're going down to. And of course, Eloise is very happy. Of course, she's very happy to see Eloise. And of course, Rudius is basically he's surprised to see him because well, caused some boss. Like oh, fond memories. Yeah, the book, the episode cuts the fact these two have been before. In the previous season of the show was during. I think it was the adaptation book four of them as taking these two met. Now, the only reason why he's brought back here at this point in time is because basically in a way he becomes a recurring character up until the final book of the series because of stuff really about this particular character. Which is surprising the fact he he came back here. Now, how they met, in case you all forgot the book, basically had to remind me about this because it's been a bit since I've watched the first season show. So, basically how these two met, Rudius was stripped naked for daring to play with the sacred beast. And by the way, the the events of the, epi the, the, episode, the following episode were referenced in the episode this particular season. Those sacred, they don't mention sacred beast, but... Yeah. So, unless any... I kind of wish they would have mentioned, like, oh yeah, fond memories. Like, they could show, like, a brief flashback to, basically, when they first met. Or, I don't know, how about I actually kind of talk about what happened there? Just say, oh yeah, we've been here before, and just move on. So then we, they, they, Geese takes him to Paul, who is not doing too well. He gives Rudius a hug, though he's hugging from the waist because he basically can't stand very well. Though apparently he later stands up to talk to Eloise, which is kind of odd. And of course, well, Rudius tells him basically, well, there's some stuff basically they cut here, a little bit, not much. So, basically he tells him he's like very happy. Now, there is mention about Nord in the episode, his sister, Nord. 
Uh, she is not mentioned in this episode. They mentioned Aisha, his other sister, but not the other one. I'm not sure why her mentioning was cut from the episode. You would think it was probably cut at the time. It's possible, but you could have kept it. I mean, it's a brief mention. It is like one line. Seriously. By the way, Nor does not return to the book until like the end of the book. Yes, seriously. I mentioned, oh yeah, they have a kind of child coming. They think he's married. Of course, he thinks it's Eloise. <laughs> he's, he's like, nope. By the way, they do mention that he does mention the fact that Selfie is his wife. Uh, there is a reference to Selfie. Uh, he does mention basically like a little recap, which I'm presuming you, you, you can say, even though it wasn't mentioned here in this episode, he probably talked about it off screen. So then he uses the rest of the party and the whole thing with the book. There's a book they brought basically from the, from the uh, Magic University. Uh, they don't mention the fact, he does not mention the episode that teleportation circles are considered taboo. Yes, they're considered taboo for reasons unexplained. Uh, if you're curious, does the books basically mention of why the heck they're taboo? No, they don't. They never do. Uh, it's a big mystery for the series. You'll think, oh, may may maybe the anime cut it out. No, they did not. They did not cut this out at all because the book never gave an explanation of why the heck became taboo. So, they call it Teleportation Labyrinth. It, you, you, you can maybe surmise basically comes in the Labyrinth. They, they basically forbid Teleportation Circles. So, and and Roxy was lost, but she presumably, uh, a lot, like, basically there was no evidence that she died. They, they assume that she's alive. Of course, Rudius is worried about her, and the whole scene of him worrying about her, that comes to the end of Chapter 1. Yes, the end of Chapter 1, which I'm glad they had that this in the course uh elsie gets up and of course mentioned the whole thing with that and geese basically reading the book which that did happen uh they cut out the mention of hack that rudy has felt bit, um not insulted just a bit frustrated the fact that geese had to basically verify about about the book's contents now <clears throat> geese's perspective probably has to have proof the fact that rudy's not lying about this now, the reason why I appreciate that, because in real life, that is kind of a big issue. People will say stuff, and no one will verify it. At all. Because, in real life, that's been kind of an issue I have had with real life stuff. Related to news. Stuff. Or people say stuff, and they have no way of backing it up. Yes. In my honest opinion, if you're going to say something, have heart evidence to back up what you claim. You would think, do I do that? Do I exaggerate exactly, like, of stuff I say? No, I don't exaggerate. I don't usually do that because, like, yeah, people do check, basically, what I say is true, which... That's good. To prove the fact I'm not a liar. And the problem nowadays is that I'd say in the last few years we that there, the public has had a really... I have had a really big issue with stuff being stated. Specifically stuff from the left wing side. Where they say stuff and they have no evidence backing up at all. And for some reason, people are buying this nonsense. Now, I'm not going to say who or what type of thing it is, uh, because I do not want to go into politics on any of my shows. Purely because I will be chastised for it, and I don't want that. My videos are meant to basically talk about anime, comic books, basically anything fan-based. Any people do like. Okay? I'm not here to talk about politics. I only bring this up because stuff like this should happen in real life. Okay? I think it's kind of dumb, the fact that it's not done. 
But that's just my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. If anybody uh, agrees to disagree on that opinion, fine. I have no issue with that. All right? Moving on. So, at the verification thing, and then we cut to Rudius, Leela, and Paul all sharing a room together. Which looks like a weird room where it's got like more than three beds. It looks like about five or six beds in this room. And now the anime does not mention this inn at all. What type of inn this is. Like you can assume this is probably like a, a pub. I just happen to have some rooms. But this is an inn. Yes, uh, the book describes this as an inn for B rank adventurers. And it's very mud shaped. And of course, uh, Rudy is asked by Leela how A she is doing, which glad I kept that in. Um, some of this now, some of the scene is kept in intact. I do appreciate that. They mentioned, oh yeah, Master Storage just kick him. Like, it's kind of weird saying that given the fact they're not sharing a bed. The three these are not sharing a bed together at all. It looked like they're all sleeping on like small twin size beds, which in the case of Rudy is probably for him. Uh, lightly, probably for him, unless, well, yes, even though for the past, like, from his perspective, like, the past week he slept in a tent, but in the case of, uh, prior to that, he has spent six months basically sharing a queen-size bed with Selfie. And, of course, he does recount, basically, they don't mention this here, but the, that he, in the book, he does mention to Paul about the events of kind of what happened after they last saw each other basically gets them all caught up which you can say presumably that the anime does keep the you can say the anime probably has to mention always oh, probably half off screen presumably yes and then they go down to lab at the very next day now this is the next part here i'm going to mention was definitely cut but i think should not have been cut okay what was cut here that in my eyes been should never been cut Elsie mentioning to Paul that Selfie is her granddaughter. They mentioned the whole thing about her being kind of like a like her being like a him being like a son to her, and and you're probably thinking, what the heck does that mean? And they just move on from it. Basically, the conversation was slightly longer. They cut due to time. The fact that uh, Selfie's father was Elsie's son. And they realize his name is Laws. Because in the anime, I do not ever remember Selfie's father every name. Now, his parents, her parents are never named the whole series in what seems so far from the anime. I don't think her father has ever seen. Not that I can think of, no. I think she's mentioned, uh, not by name, but he does mention it. Excuse me. Rodius does mention the reason why else he's not mentioned as being well Law's mother is because something happened in the past. Presumably. Now, there's stuff I didn't mind per se. Uh I do have a minor issue with Norbert cut, but this this particular dialogue should not have been cut at all. Paul should have been told about this in the anime. And they referred to the floors of the this labyrinth. As sanctums. Not sure why, but they do. I think it was thinking thing like a big building, just or stratum, I think it's called. It's floors. I, I thought it was just this is kind of weird. The fact they changed this like this. I, so they walk and there's a bit about like Elsie being head and chatting with Paul, and then they deal with some monsters on like few of the floors they rest. Uh, then eventually, like, Rudius is asked, like, where, where could possibly Roxy be? And then he stops, walks over to a wall, and then hears something. And then we cut to Roxy, where she is battling monsters. A army of them by herself. Now, 
the anime does cut out a brief sequence here. Like, the first portion of the final chapter is cut. Which I'm fine with that. It's fine. I have no issues being cut because there's no, no dialogue. It's just kind of explaining what exactly is happening here. In terms of the anime, yeah, you can obviously tell what's happening here. And all of these worm-like creatures are attacking Roxy. She makes the earth wall. The wall gets broken. Uh, so Wong gets basically, her staff gets snapped away from her. And it looks like she's about to die. And then she wakes up, everything is frozen. And then the episode ends with her seeing Rudeus. But she does not know it's Rudeus. Yeah. She does not know this is a former student at all. She has no idea. All she sees is a handsome man who just saved her life. And he says, thank God. Thank God. That's basically the last in the episode. And I think that's about halfway through. Yeah, it's basically about halfway through chapter four. Because chapter four ends with page like 105. So it's basically at the fourth to last page of chapter four. So I am presuming they're going to basically like um, resume things. By, by the way, this episode does show off this guy here. This dwarf. His name is Tahan. Yeah. I remember hearing something. She was like trapped in some kind of block of ice or something. Uh, when I read this book originally. I guess I just remember. Because it's been, it's been, it's been a good couple years since I read the book. But uh, the episode stuff was still pretty good. Though the selfish stuff basically. Also... Uh, this part I'm glad they cut here because um, the book he says Master Fitz mentioned about the teleportation circles even though that actually that is an error Fitz had no idea AKs, like it's like he's thinking that Fitz was not selfie even though he knew that was that at all that, that was the case I'm glad that was cut because that was confusing to read because the person who actually told about teleportation circles was Naisha. The uh, the girl who hang up with Orsa in season one. But uh, not much else to say this episode. It was really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, we have only about four more episodes left to go for the season. Do I think they're going to finish adapting this book for the season? <sighs> yes. Okay. Uh, first question to ask. How many chapters are in this book? There are 16. And this episode covered... If you're really curious... It covered that much. Yeah, almost four full chapters. Um, they did a pretty good job. Um, that's how I feel about it. Yep. But yeah, that's particularly it. Particular view. Please be sure to like comment subscribe turn notifications and do not hit this like button next up is a comic corner and it's probably my last one for the evening um i am gonna watch demon slayer but i'll probably review it tomorrow because it's getting kind of late okay next view bye